you have to know that uh, things like this start just from one thing, which is a dream. My dream was that all students could be able to develop projects in our university. Here we want to establish something which is way bigger. I would say a company, more or less. But for doing this, we, we need all of it. Okay, guys, welcome everyone to the launch event of Polyspace. Here is Francesco, the president and one of the co founders of the association. And together with me, we have Aloisia Russo and Swarnajoti Mukherjee, which are the other two founders of the association. I'm so proud and excited to be here presenting Polyspace to the world. Let me say something before we start. This event only represents a tip of an iceberg made of a huge amount of work. That's why before starting, I would like to thank all the executive members and all the people that worked hard and spent this time to set up all the necessary to be ready for today. Thank you from the bottom of our heart, guys. Well, another small notice before we lift off. As you can see in this slide, we are offering you today a goodie to let you remember this event forever. So you can download your custom certificate of attendance and share it on your social profiles with the hashtag Polyspace launch. You will find two links in the comments. One is for the certificate and another one will be used for playing a CubeSat quiz that will be done later on. But let's see what this presentation is about. So. So this is the program of, of the presentation so that you don't miss anything. Uh, at the beginning, we will have myself, Zwaran Jyoti, Aloisia, and Vishnu Mardan uh, talking about uh, Polyspace. Uh, later on, we will have uh, an endorsement from Politecnico di Milano coming from Professor Pierluigi Di Lizia. Uh, then we will, we will, of course, explain to you how to work with us and how to join our association. And this will be told by Damian Herrera and Nicolò Bussi. Uh, then the hot topic, guys. So we will be explaining uh, what is our CubeSat project and how to join it. Uh, this will be done by Lyle Campbell and Andreas Portillo. Uh, near the end, we will be explaining you uh, which are our future projects. So what are we going to develop? and what you can jump in and what to, should you expect from Polyspace in the future. And this will be done by Francesca Sala. Of course, at the end, I will give you the conclusions. Don't forget to prepare your questions because as you can see in the outline, we will have two chances of uh, getting your question. So please just think about it. Uh, well, I think that um, that's everything. So. Fasten your seatbelt and lift up. Polyspace Adventure started during March 2020, when Aloisia, Swana Jodi, and myself had the idea of founding a new association in Polytechnic, which was devoted to space-related activities to counteract the lack of practical activities in the academic path. Since then, we started working on a strategy to involve as many people as possible in this new adventure and make them aware that something big was about to happen. That's why in April 2020, we published a survey to assess the need of a new space association in Politecnico, with the aim, of course, to release projects uh, which, were related, which are related to space. With our big surprise, we obtained more than eight, <coughs> 800 uh, participants 
to the survey, and almost all of them were interested in such a new framework. This survey gave a great boost to the association development and made clear that the dream could have good chances of becoming a reality, but with the help of the right people. The survey was closed in May and interested participants were added to a newsletter to keep following all of our development process. During July and August, we mainly focused our attention on the branding of the association. So we developed a logo, which is the synthesis of our values. Uh, as you can see in the bottom right of the slide, our logo is composed by an hexagon, which represents coherence and unity. Then on the background, there is the Milan Cathedral, which is symbol of the city. And of course, it represents the solidity and longevity we hope that polyspace will have. Then we have the celestial body, which represents, of course, the Earth, but first of all, the international community of polyspace. Then we have the red arrow, which is shaped actually as the compass in the Polytechnic of the Milano logo and represents the ambition and projection towards the future of the association. Also, during this month, we were busy in organizing the call for the first board of polyspace. It was during this first experience that we decided to go for a formal approach for the recruitment process. So we asked the applicants to deliver their CVs and motivation letters. This strategy paid off. Since after an interview round, we managed to gather more than 30 people to take the role considered in the structure we thought. Finally, at the end of September, we managed to have our first meeting in the conference room of the Department of Aerospace Science and Technology. It was the beginning of an amazing journey. But let me give you some more information about us. So Polyspace is the first space association of Politecnico di Milano. We are established as a non-profit association for the Italian government. While the process of acceptance to Politecnico's book of association is an ongoing formality. The association has three main goals. The first is to offer students hands-on experiences on real engineering proje projects. The second is to help them building their network in the sector. And the third is to spread their space culture and opportunities. As you might know, there are lots of opportunities and lots of subfields of the aerospace domain which are often neglected, like space law, space economy, astrobiology. We don't want our students, our associates, and all of, of the guys that get in touch with polyspace to discover this kind of aspects of the aerospace. Before I explain a bit about our values, it is remarkable to see that we have a, um, an attention to gender equality and diversity in our association. In fact, in our executive members assembly, there is a good balance from the gender perspective, as well as from the diversity point of view. We are composed of members from several nationalities. Well, I bet that now you might be curious to discover more about our structure and about the identity of our members. For that, I'll leave the floor to Aloysia another of the co-founders of Polyspace. Thank you, Francesco. Hi, everybody. I am Aloysia, and now I'm talking about the structure of our association. The association is shaped as a small, medium-sized enterprise to enable an experience as close as possible to a job one. It's divided in two main groups, the executive members and the members. Executives are the leading group of the association, they are divided in five departments to handle all the aspects of the life of the association. We have the human resources department, the marketing and communication one, the legal, the projects department, and the business and finance one. Moreover, departments are structured in divisions that take care of specific aspects. In particular, projects department has also temporary divisions, which represents the ongoing project inside Polyspace. 
Each department has at least one leader that together with the president, the secretary and the treasurer forms the board of the association. The board is helped by the, an advisory board, which is actually covered by me and Suana Jodi. The group has also a relationship with external institu institutions and organizations, as well as with the companies. Let's move on the board members. We have to respect the Polymi Association requirements. That's why we need a president, which is Francesco, a secretary, Lorcan, a treasurer, Iman. Then we decided to put in the board the projects, the legal, the business, the marketing and HR departments represented by Laila, Iman, Francesca, Ritesh, Dario, Sofia and Munazza. In particular, the business department is responsible for recording all the association business activities, seeking uh, new partners for collaborations, as well as managing relationships with external advice, uh, advisors and companies, and for negotiation with external parties. This is composed by Ritesh, Iman, Nofel, Lorcan, and as you can see later on, we are also searching for other people to join this department. Now is the turn of our beautiful HR department, composed by Munaza, Nisha, Vaishu. And as you can see, we are seeking for other members. They are responsible for the whole recruitment process, as well as to collect feedback from inside and outside of the, the association. And since we take care about having a good work environment, they do periodic health checkups among members. Then we have the legal department represented by Francesca. She is responsible about the whole bureaucracy and all the legal staff for the whole projects. And let's move on the marketing and communication first group represented by Dario, Sofia, Bianca, Federico, Teca, Tecla, and also here we are searching for another person to join the department. They are responsible for all our amazing graphics to man manage the social media, to interact with all our followers and to make videos and pictures. And they are managing all the webinars the association will offer later on. And uh, the second group is represented by Antonio, Nicola, Riccardo, Sherar, Surut, and Luigi. They write scientific articles, collect news about us, write the newsletter, managing the website and all the digital infrastructure. And then we have the project departments, particularly the space tech explorers with Lyle, uh, Davide and Andrea. They manage all the projects proposed, research new projects to fulfill polyspace goals and give their support to the projects. And then we have the activities group made by Francesca, Damiana, Nicolò, Esther, Riccardo, Alberto uh, uh, and Mara. Uh, they are responsible for uh, the webinars organization, they plan company visits, they call for uh, uh, funds, and they also plan events and workshops. I would underline that what happened until now is merit of all the amazing people I have presented so far, and all the people will speak further on. And now I will give the floor to the other police space founder, Swarna Jyoti. Yep. Thank you so much, Alessia, uh, for this. So. As we can see till now, who are the backbone of Polyspace? And uh, whatever, as you can see here, the achievements, it is uh, due to all these people together because we are, we are one family. So yeah, we tried to gather uh, all those people in September, somehow we got a chance to do our first board meeting. And then, you know, this is the 2020 was the, especially the year of Corona and the social Socializing was not a good good point on the time, but still, uh, still, actually, we got we got some time inside our polymy to do some socializing. So 
we uh, we joined that, that Atu Parthu event uh, to meet uh, some students inside there to, to let them know that what we are doing and what we're going to do. In the meantime, we also ask for a uh, call for funds, which is really necessary for our different projects and different activities. So the interesting is that we already earned 6,000 euros, which is, which is not so small. And then you know that uh, it, it is the era of uh, the social media and all those things. So we try to uh, share the, the SpaceX Dragon's crew missions with all of you via our, via our uh, Instagram profile and all. And then, and also after that, uh, the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics. So we, we got some one project and we also submitted a proposal and the mission is exciting, which is called the Mars Sample Return Mission. And after me, um, that uh, it, it will be discussed. So just just wait for a moment. And uh, and and you know that one of our main project uh, is, will be the CubeSat. So we try to call for these people. Uh, we try to recruit. And in the end, uh, in February, we also recruited people for system engineers, team leader, and the project manager, especially. But also, we are we are not only in the spin. We also try to deliver our knowledge. So we are also organized a webinar, and the first webinar was with the Mr. Mr. Troy Mackin from the the CEO of Moonsat Company and OAFR from Australia, and another one is Professor Davide, and he is the professor from the M Riddle USA. An interesting part is that you you are going to find out our relations hopefully in future with M Riddle after after a couple of slides. slides. But now the important thing is that in March, we are established, uh, we, we also approved from the Italian government and this is the huge news for Polyspace and the whole family. Now, you, you are gonna see exciting missions regarding the Mars and my colleague Vishnu will take you a tour to Mars. Thank you, Swana Jyoti. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Vishnu Ardhan Shaktibala. I'm one of the project managers of uh, AAA MSR Challenge. So firstly, I would like to introduce the team. The team is composed of 12 members, and uh, we are primarily supervised by two professors, Professor Pierluigi Delizia and Professor Mauro Masari. And the team is assisted by two project managers. As you can see in the first row of the slide, uh, myself, uh, Vishnu Ardhan Shaktibala, and uh, another project manager is uh, Nicola Tisi. And the core team is composed of uh, 10 fabulous undergraduate students, uh, starting from uh, Paolo Gratigliano, Gianni Curti, Luca Colombo, Mattia Bertolini, Fabrizio Maccari, Alessandro Castelvetri, Miguel Santos, Alberto Chiazzi, Matteo Pionti, and Andrea Pinelli. Now that you have seen the team, uh, let us understand a little bit about the mission. So the team has named the mission as uh, Ice Cream, which basically stands for Ice Collection and Retrieval Expedition aimed at Mars. Of course, the name gives away that we are going to collect the ice. Uh, now let us look at you know a uh, little bit about the importance of uh, doing Mars sample return and also uh, importance of collecting ice core in the first place. So Mars sample return missions are you know uh, are considered as high science value return missions because once you bring back the sample from the Mars surface. Uh, to back to Earth, you can use all the instruments at our disposal. For example, we can use the state of the laboratories to investigate sample and gain more information. The amount of information that we can collect on Earth is tremendously higher as compared to the amount of information that we can collect by using a robotic vehicle on the surface of the planet. Because these robotic vehicles which go onto the planet are limited by the number of instruments that they can carry, and the instruments that they can carry are limited in terms of accuracy and capability. That is why the, the uh, Mars sample return missions are considered as you know high science value return missions. So after that, we have ice core. You know the mission overall requires us to uh, uh, bring back ice core, but we need to understand what is the significance of bringing back the ice core. It's so fascinating that just by studying this ice core samples, we can really understand the climatic conditions on the planet of on, on the planet in the past as well as in the future. You know we can at least know what will happen in the future. And also, it gives an idea, uh, gives us an idea about the characteristics of the water cycle, which is very important because if you want to extract water by using in situ resource utilization, uh, you have to know uh, what is the you know how the water cycle is uh, you know uh, changes with with respect to time. So once we extract the water, you can use it as a propellant for the launcher, or you can use it for the life support systems. 
So these are the critical points that I would like you to keep in mind because next time when you hear the name sample return in general, you know that it is, it is very useful for our future civilization. Yes, I think we can go to next slide uh, where you can look at mission status. So everything was started in November where the team formed and then the team started to work on, you know, uh, state of the art analysis and uh, environment analysis where they have studied, you know, different past missions. So after getting the you know valuable information about the past mission, they went on to uh, do a mission architecture start off in December, where they have uh, selected a feasible mission architecture. And in next couple of months, which is uh, January and February, they started working on subsystem design. Uh, as of now, which is March, uh, they have done two iterations of subsystem design, and still they are working on refining it uh, more and more. And they started along with the subsystem design, they started working on Mars ascent vehicle design as well. And uh, this month and next month, they'll be working on mission refinements. And of course, they'll go through a lot of critical reviews from the professor end as well as from Polyspace. And uh, before now, May 14th, which is the deadline for the submission of the report, we hope to submit it, submit the report. And of course, in the, in the month of August, we expect to get the positive results from AIA Association. So I would like to point out that the team you know, who started to work on this mission, they never had any experience about the space mission design. But with their passion and motivation, they really worked hard. And just in this short span of time, they were able to you know, come up with good results. So what I'm saying is, if you are interested, only two things you need, you need, motivation and passion. So if you'd like to participate and understand and learn more about space mission design and would like to participate in the next uh, edition of the you know, competition, please do contact us. Of course, we would like to help you out. And uh, that is all from my end. And I would like to call upon Francesco Ventri, who will take us through the next part of the event. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vishnavardhan, for uh, your presentation of the ice cream mission. It was really interesting to see how these proactive undergraduates are developing the mission. It sounds really incredible. But regarding this, I would like to introduce you one of the supervisors of the mission, Professor Pierluigi Di Dizio. Professor Di Dizia gained his Master of Science in Aerospace Engineering cum laude at Politecnico in 2003, then his PhD in Aerospace Engineering from the same university. He has been teaching assistant for more than 15 courses in, through these years, and is also co-author um, and co-author of more than 100 publications. His research, research interests include space situational awareness, orbit determination, and spacecraft GNC for proximity operation, amongst the other. Now he is a lecturer of our space mechanics at Politecnico di Milano. Please, Professor, take the floor. Many thanks, Francesco. So first of all, uh, many thanks for inviting me to this uh, launch event. Uh, the, I'm a Pierluigi Di Rizzi, I'm, I'm assistant professor of aerospace mechanics at Politecnico di Milano. So the objective of this uh, presentation is going to give you a picture of the relevance of space activities nowadays uh, worldwide and also the importance of extracurricular activities in your studies. So let's start first of all with this picture, let's say. So yeah, you have a typical picture of the sky over Milan at a random time during the day. So this is taken with the digital planetarium, but the main difference with respect to a standard digital planetarium is that in a standard digital planetarium, the white dots are the stars. But in this case, the white dots are all the artificial objects orbiting uh, uh, above Milan, so in the sky, at a random time during the day. So there are many. Actually, at the moment, we are tracking with the ground-based sense of more than 20,000 artificial objects. 10% of them are actually operational satellites, active satellites. 90% are just space debris. So how is it possible that we reach such a situation? Well, because space is useful for many applications. And why? Well, first of all, ground coverage. So imagine you have a camera on board uh, an aircraft. So you know that aircraft fly at an altitude of about 10 kilometers. And so with your camera, you can get the coverage of a certain portion of the Earth's surface. Now, if you take the same instrument on board a spacecraft, for example, you know, on a geostationary orbit, well, with the same camera, you can get a larger portion of the Earth's surface. In geostationary orbit, you can actually reach up to 40% of the Earth's surface. You may say, okay, but in this way, we are losing resolution. Well, that's true, but this is, for example, a typical image that you can take with the camera on board the spacecraft in low Earth orbit. So you are obtaining 30 centimeter resolution. So 
okay, you cannot recognize, recognize the features of my face, for example, in this picture, but you can clearly understand what's happening in this uh, airport. Another important, uh, mm, uh, let's say, uh, reason why space is useful is the continuous coverage that you can get. So with an aircraft, you take off, you have a crew space, and at a certain point, you need to land. With the space car, the situation is different. So once you have the space car in orbit, theoretically, the space car will remain there forever. So it can give you a continuous coverage of the Earth's surface. So based on this, uh, uh, let's say, uh, application, based on these uh, advantages, so we had several satellites that have been developed over the years for a plethora of applications like positioning on the Earth's surface, telecommunication, remote sensing, weather forecast. So in the table that you have in the slides, I reported the total number of active satellites in 2009. So in 2009, we had 1,300 satellites active uh, orbiting the Earth. Nowadays, we have more than 2,000 satellites orbiting the Earth, active satellites orbiting the Earth. So but the reason why I uh, used this old database, 2009, is that in this database, I was able to find also information about the military satellites. So you, as you see, even 20% of the active satellites are actually for military purposes. So space is useful not only for civil applications, but also for military applications. Uh, the applications anyway in space can be divided in two main groups. So we have the upstream applications and downstream application. Upstream means essentially the development of space platforms and technologies that are actually orbiting in space. Downstream instead is the use of the data generated by spacecraft to develop and implement services for the people, services on ground. In all cases anyway, interdisciplinarity is the key for development in space. This is crucial, this is important. So space is not a prerogative of aerospace engineers. So it, it, it's, there is room for everyone, from engineering to medicine to social sciences, for example, okay? And we expect to have a growth of the space industry in the future. So this is a report of Morgan Stanley in 2020. So they predicted that the global space industry could generate a revenue of more than $1 trillion by 2040. And a key role in this growth is going to be played by the startups. So you know that startups are strongly connected with the university. Often startups are founded by researchers in university or even students from universities. This is the trend of the investment in startups worldwide. So as you can see, there is a grow, a constant grow, let's say, and actually from 2018 to 2020, we doubled the investment worldwide in startups. This data have been taken from the Observatorio on Space Economy that we have at Politecnico di Milano. And we are doing a pretty good job in Europe, as you can see from this picture. So essentially, in terms of percentage, we are investing the same amount of money as in Europe, as the North America in startups. But I want to keep also a more romantic view of space exploration. So we know that space have com has commercial applications, scientific applications. There are also applications that are not able to classify. So you know, for example, a few years ago, Elon Musk launched a Tesla car in orbit. So now we have a car orbiting in space. You may wonder why, I really don't know. It's probably related to marketing, but again, we also have these kind of applications in space. But I want to keep, as I said, a more romantic view. And in order to do that, I want to give you the statement of Kostan Tsiolkovsky. It's quite a famous one. So uh, at the beginning of the 19th century, Konstantin Tsiolkovsky said, Earth is the cradle of humanity, but one cannot live in the cradle forever. So essentially, we want to go to space even just because we are curious, even just because we want to know what's there in space. And this is also the reason why I'm usually fascinated even by episodes that are not necessarily strictly related with the direct application of, uh, of space, space activities. For example, recently we had the landing of Perseverance, 18th of February 2021. This is a real footage of the landing of the lander on the surface of Mars. This is not science fiction. This is the first ever footage of an object landing on another planet hundreds of millions away from the Earth. Impressive from my point of view. Another episode that I think is quite relevant is, is the landing of 
the, uh, the uh, boosters of the SpaceX Falcon EV on February 6, 2018. This is a movie, this is not a movie that is played backward. This is actually, these are actually two rockets that are landing on the surface of the Earth. So when I saw this video for the, fir for the first time, I said, okay, guys, we will be able to go to Mars and come back in the future, thanks to this technology. But let's go now to the extracurricular, extracurricular activities. So soon you will graduate. I remember the day I graduated. I was extremely happy. I want to be honest. I got drunk at the end of the day. But I also remember the first day on the job. I was panicked. I didn't know which button to push. I didn't know how to proceed in certain situations, let's say. But please don't panic as I did. Uh, there are various reasons because uh, in order not to panic, let's say. First one is that Politecnico di Milano, as well as other universities, is providing you with the tools to succeed, to solve the problems that you will uh, encounter, let's say. And you have also an additional opportunities, which are exactly the extracurricular activities. They can be a training for your pro professional life. They can be an opportunity to challenge yourself on real life problems, which are exactly the problems that you are going to face on the job. So here are just few examples of extracurricular activities uh, based on our experience in my department, let's say the Department of Aerospace, Science and Technology of Politecnico di Milano. So it's been already two years that we help organizing and we host the NASA Space App Challenge. So in this case, you have hundreds of students divided in groups, which needs to develop scientific projects in 48 hours in different areas, covering a broad spectrum of capabilities. So design of space system, data processing, communication, and so on. Another example is the European Space Agency Concurrent Engineering Challenge. So in this case, you have 20, 30 students interacting in a concurrent engineering framework in order to design a mission in five days by competing with other students from all uh, you, uh, university all around Europe. And again, we have the student competitions. You heard about that in the previous presentation. So we have a great uh, success story of in this uh, student competition. These are just few examples. So we had, for example, the Aeroswitch team was the winner of the 2019-2020 AIAA graduate aircraft design competition. We had the winner of the Leonardo drone contest that was devoted to promote the application of artificial intelligence to unmanned systems like drones. We had the Polish crew team who ranked third in the 37 student design competition of the Vertical Fly Society. So how can you be engaged in these activities? Well, student association play a crucial role in this sense. At the moment, we have tw 23 student associations active at Politecnico di Milano. So I invite you to consider to join one of them. So for example, to join Polispace, but before joining any of them, you have to make me a promise. So you know, I teach at Politecnico di Milano, don't make me see something like this. So don't let you be taken too much by the extracurricular activities. Try to find the right balance between university studies and extracurricular activities. They are both important. It's up to you. So good luck for your future. And now I leave the floor to Damiana and Nicolò, who are going to explain you how to join Polispace in case you want. So Thanks, Professor. It was amazing. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Damiana. I'm part of the activity department here with Rizzo. And uh, we will talk uh, about uh, how you can work with us. I will talk uh, about uh, how to become a member for Polymy students. And Nico uh, will explain you how to become an external collaborator. So let's go. So first of all, if you are a Polymy student uh, and you want to join us, you, of course, will have some benefits. Uh, first of all, you can uh, you will have the access to a, a web service. In this area, there are some sections that are quite interesting. For example, uh, there is a section when we post uh, a lot of space-related opportunities. For example, calls for challenges, workshops, uh, or hackathons, for example. 
uh, you uh, can you will have the opportunity to uh, to talk uh, with other people that have your same interests so start to work um, to, in order to to create uh, your own network for example and uh, the last point uh, but not least uh, is that you can participate to exclusive webinars that uh, they are for the people that are not uh, are not a member of Polyspace, uh, not free, but for you that uh, will be part of our association. Of course, they will. Then uh, you can uh, you can meet other people that have your same interest, and uh, they can came from all the department uh, of Polytechnico, and uh, actually they are. Uh, from the nationality didactical, so you will also have the opportunity uh, to be in an international environment. And the last point, uh, remember me that we are working on gadgets and uh, they we available soon. They are like t-shirts, diggers, uh, pants, uh, something like that. So let's go to the slide. Okay, here. Uh, I will explain you some benefits that uh, are quite interest interesting for your future career. Because you could have uh, the opportunity to do an internship with uh, one of our partners, for example, companies, and you can actually work with them. So you meet experts of the sector. Um, another chance is to work uh, on uh, hands on projects. For example, uh, our first call was for CubeSat, but uh, of course during the year we will uh, we will do some other calls if you don't like them you can propose your own project so for example if you have an idea you can see uh, it uh, we can uh, we can make it real so of course uh, uh, every member of uh, police space uh, will be part of an assembly so it is called member assembly and uh, you will have the right to vote for internal decisions. So you are actually um, the part of, uh, of our association, so you can vote. So how to join us? In the next slide we will see. It's quite simple. I remember you that uh, only Politecnico di Milano students uh, can join uh, Polispace. And uh, it is quite simple, yes, you uh, have to go to our website, polispace.it, uh, uh, click join us, become a member and subscribe, uh, fill the form, and then there will be a payment that is valid for all the entire year. So after the confirmation, you are a real member of Polispace, and uh, you can join us and all the benefits that I have explained to you. So I leave the word to Nicolo. Hello, everyone. Well, thank you, Damiana. So now let's look what's a food, what if you are a partner or something else. We are looking for partners to cooperate with us and help us grow as an association. If you're a professional, you can register as an external collaborator and help us with your valuable knowledge and experience. As a collaborator, you will get in touch with a pool of talented and passionate students from, other, from the association and have the possibility to cooperate with them. Your work and research will be known by a wide international audience of young students and experts from different countries all over the globe. Another great possibility for you is to advise students on their research work and co-author potential researches that could arise from their supervised work, which is of course a great opportunity for you. Once again, the procedure to become an external collaborator is simple. Just go to our website and in the Work With Us menu, click on the External Collaborators. After you have filled your form, you will be enrolled in the list of expert counselors willing to support Polyspace during the development of projects and will be able to contact you. This procedure is reserved to personnel outside Politecnico di Milano, of course. Finally, companies are also welcome to collaborate with us, both as a sponsor or as a direct partner. We are seeking for support, both financial and technical, along with the possibility to access facilities and tools to develop our projects. Some companies are already working with us and believe in our strength as the first space association of Politecnico di Milano. LeapSpace, for example, but also Sidarius, Space Generation Advisory Council and Primo Milio 
already have a strong bond with our newborn association. In return for your help, we will put you in direct link with the academic environment. You will meet their experienced and talented students, with whom you may begin a working relationship. We can provide you with competitive development costs, as well as the possibility to test and validate your hardware in flight on board the first chipset ever built by students from Politecnico di Milano. If you're interested, all you have to do now is research your website. Under the work, under the work with us menu, there is a dedicated section for you where you can get in contact with us. We will reach you back as soon as possible, of course. Again, this possibility is reserved exclusively to companies. So what are you waiting for? Come and join us as come and join us and our official partners in this enthusiastic journey to boldly go where no student of Politecnico has gone before. So now, if you have any questions, Francesco and I are here for you to answer them. We will do a brief question and answer section. So don't be shy, just write them in the comments and we'll do our best to answer you. So hello. Yeah, I just see, yeah, uh, thank you, Nicola, for introducing me. Just before starting the Q&A session, it's worth remind that, uh, as Aloisi highlighted before, we have some position open for the executive members. So if you are willing to join, you can find also some open opportunities on, on our website as well. And also, if you look at our social media, you can retrieve any info. Do you already have some partner? I see this question. So, well, yeah, actually, uh, we do have some partners. Uh, we met a lot of company till now uh and we are trying to create a chain an environment uh a network in which we uh could insert body space and we could act in a synergic way um so the answer is yes we have some partners and we have shown the let's say one that we can disclose but there are some secret ones you should discover So I don't know if there's anything else. Is there uh, any other question? We we are here for you guys. So if you might have any doubt maybe about the uh, process to become a member or whatever, uh, just to remind, just to make a recap, uh, waiting for other question, if any, you can become a member of Polyspace. Uh, you should be from Politecnico di Milano. Then an external collaborator, if you're not from Politecnico, and as a company, you can join us. I see other question. Nicolò, please address it. Well, Franz Manzoni asks, is possible having more information regarding the business department? Uh, well, well, of course, uh, Francesco should, may probably answer that better, but we encourage you to write us directly to get specific information about this kind of topic. Or yeah if you if you want to know more uh, you just have to go on our social media and you will find that in our bio uh, there is a link uh, which contains actually the guidelines for applying to executive members position and inside that guidelines you can find the uh, actual uh, duties of the uh, business department so you can know how they handle the relationship with companies and how they carry on their work. I hope this answered your, your question. Okay, how can Davide Giacomini ask, how can other universities create a collaboration with you in the same way as institutions? Well, yes, Davide. So you can reach us in the same section uh, dedicated to companies and institutions. Uh, then we we can actually get in touch. Uh, you you will be able to uh, send us an email with uh, with easy, and uh, we will get back to you and try to set up a collaboration based on uh, reciprocal needs, of course. So Simone Zambrinas, in order to get hired, do you need to be a Polymi student? 
Well, of course, if you mean as a member, yes, of course, you, you have to be part of Polytechnical. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can be, for example, an external collaborator if you already graduate from Polytechnical, for example, or if you just are a student from another university or something else. But as a member, you have to be part of Polytechnical, of course. Yeah, Simone, unfortunately, I should confirm that uh, if you want to be part of Polyspace, since we have strict policies from the legal perspective, uh, we are uh, constrained to hire Polytechnical people. The only opportunity you might have is to actually join as an external collaborator and we will get back to you and of course you are welcome to offer your expertise. Okay, so I think that uh, we are done with the Q&A session. Uh, I would like to thank you for, for your questions and we can move so the hot topic of today, guys, which is the CubeSat of Politecnico di Milano made by Polyspace. And I would like to introduce and to give the floor to Lyle Campbell and Andreas Portillo for a quiz on the CubeSat. Uh, thank you, Francesco, for the introduction. So as Francesco mentioned, we would now like to ask the audience some questions to introduce uh, the concept of a CubeSat to you. So a CubeSat is a modular satellite. You can think of it like uh, Lego blocks where you can combine multiple small blocks together to make a larger satellite. This concept is uh, very flexible and it allows um, low cost designs as well. The specification for CubeSats was introduced in 1999 at Caltech University in the USA, and it's now one of the most popular uh, nanosatellite designs. So I'll hand over to Andrea for our first question. Hello, everybody. I'm Andrea. And now let's start with the quiz. So I think that we should provide some, some hints in the meanwhile, but let's start from the first question. Oh, we, so we, we don't want to make it too easy. <laughs> Ah, yes, of course. What are the dimensions of one unit CubeSat building block? So here we have four possibilities. You have more or less 30 seconds to answer. Read carefully because it can be quite tricky. And um, let's say, so we, we have seen that the CubeSat is modular like Lego blocks, right, Lyle? And yep. so this makes the platform really cheap but and really easy to, to assemble, right? So. The fact is that uh, maybe uh, we can, like, we don't have such information from, from that. We can think that, uh, for example, uh, someone would try to put 3D printers in CubeSat. So the correct answer is, uh, let's see, 10 by 10 by 10. But the correct answer is actually 10 by 10 by 11, because if you look to the CubeSat design specification, you have a margin uh, on the Z direction for the deployment legs. So of course, the correct answer is uh, the first one. But it makes sense, of course, to have a 10 by 10 by 10 because of the name of the CubeSat. Okay, I think that we can pass to the second question. Lyle, you can go, please. Okay, the second question we have for our audience is, according to the the specifications for a CubeSat, what is the maximum la the maximum mass allowed per one unit? So remember, we can put multiple units together, which gives us then a multiple um, maximum mass, but we want to know how much can one unit weigh. And so like the first question, this one's a little bit tricky. The, the CubeSat design specification was recently updated so one of these answers is the old answer and one of them is the new answer. So people who are very familiar with CubeSats might get this right. Yes, yes. Keep in mind that we can fit inside everything, but of course, uh, more uh, the weight, more the price. Okay. Oh, okay, the so answer the, is actually we, we've, two kilograms. <laughs> We've tricked you again. Uh, yes, the, the correct answer, it was recently updated to two kilograms, but the old and the old uh, specification was 1.33 kilograms. So these satellites are very small. 
In fact, they've been deployed in space by astronauts before, simply throwing them like a baseball. They're very small. So question three, Andrea. Okay, question three. Let's see. Okay, what was the first, when was the first CubeSat launched? Okay, we have seen that the, the standard uh, was uh, edited the first time in 1999. So it is a good hint to select the correct answer. Now, we for sure have in here some space enthusiasts that have the answer right. But uh, so it could be really, really simple. We have to keep in mind that is a recent technology, okay? And uh, we have to say that it is really exploding in the last years. But the very, very first launch for a CubeSat has been in. Let's wait for the answer. Okay, the public selected. Oh, yes, correctly, 2003. <laughs> yes, it was a launch from the Soviet uh, rocket called Rocket in 2006. And uh, there was not only one CubeSat, but uh, there were uh, six CubeSats from several universities from uh, Denmark to Japan. And they collaborated and they have been uh, riding the same launcher at the same time. Now, let's pass to the last question for live. Okay, so for our final question, we want to know what are the different things that CubeSats can be used for? Are they for science, technology demonstration, commercial. anything else, um, a commercial activities, or all of the above? So keep in mind our discussion earlier that CubeSats are very flexible. Uh, we can combine multiples of a base unit to create bigger satellites if we need. In fact, the smallest CubeSat launched so far was one quarter of a unit and the biggest was 12 units. And there are even plans to build satellites that are 27 units, but they haven't been we launched have yet. We about the fact that uh, it is quite limited because it is small, so we cannot do maybe mm. everything, everything. Oh, yes. Okay, I think that everything good, <laughs> that's good. Yes, this is correct. All of these activities can be for, performed. We can see in details uh, in a few seconds uh, what are the, the actual uh, purposes for such technologies, but that's good. Thank you very much for having participated. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations to Meta <laughs> to, for having win. Okay. Thank you very much. If you want, you can, well, of course, you have to subscribe. Please subscribe to Polyspace, become a member. We want to know you. Uh, thank you very much for having participated. We hope that you have enjoyed this, this, uh, this small quiz. But now I think that we can pass uh, to more details about what we have done so far. So, like I give you the word. Please explain us what we have done so far. Okay, so I think as everybody probably knows, we're building a small CubeSat at Polyspace. The size will be somewhere between one and three U's and we plan to launch in 2023. Our main reason for building this uh, CubeSat is to help educate the next generation of space professionals and give students uh, hands-on experience with engineering projects. So these CubeSats are a wonderful new tool, which uh, due to their short development cycles can even allow students to get experience with all phases of a project during their studies. While the main goal of the project is educational, we also want our CubeSat to serve a useful technological or scientific purpose. To meet this uh, additional objective since October, we've been researching CubeSat technologies, um, science opportunities, the state of the art in general, to identify niches which we can exploit to make our CubeSat meaningful, make a meaningful contribution. Uh, we've been networking with professors at Politecnico and with companies around Europe to find these opportunities. Something we noticed during our research uh, about student CubeSat projects is that one of the greatest risks is in fact not technical, but programmatic. 
That is, uh, quite often they get cancelled due to lack of support, lack of funding. So this is something we're trying to mitigate by partnering with uh, companies and professors developing useful technologies and science. So we've now reached a sufficient stage in our, um, our development that we require a lead technical team who I'm proud to introduce now. So in December of last year, we created a call for one project manager, three systems engineers and five technical team leaders. After reviewing over 150 applications with the help of our wonderful HR department, uh, we've selected our team of nine people to lead the CubeSat project. So I'll introduce them now. Our, our project manager is Ida. Our system engineers are Paolo, Andrea and Vahid. Our telecom team leader is Lorcan. Our attitude, our attitude team leader is Andrea. Our thermal team leader is Simone. Our electrical power team leader is Marco. And our structural team leader is Mateus. We're all looking uh, very forward to, walking, to working with each other. And I'll now hand over to Andrea to explain in more detail what the team will be working on in the next weeks and months. Thank you, Lyle. Thank you, Lyle. So, uh, during our research, we have seen that there are, in general, three kinds of uh, missions for, for CubeSat in particular. So, we have science missions, space activities, and technology demonstrations. So, science missions are those devoted to the study of a portion of our universe. It can be our Earth as well as the universe. For example, astronomy uh, related mission or those devoted to the study of the environment, for example, the, the Earth environment, the atmosphere or the other planets and uh, as well as deep, uh, deep space. The technology demonstration is for risking. Okay, So we have to prove that new technology for CubeSat and for large, larger spacecraft. So for example, we have a uh, uh, technology already existing that uh, we want to miniaturize. So we want to put it on a CubeSat because it's cheap and we launch it to space to prove that they can work also in the miniaturized version. Or we can have also brand new technologies that, uh, of course, we want test on larger satellites because of cost issues. So we have a, a small portion of it on top CubeSat and we test it in space. For example, solar panels. So instead of having square meters of so or new technologies for solar panels, we put such kind of technology uh, on CubeSats or in general on satellites. So related to the space activities, these are uh, activities that are supporting uh, other missions or spacecraft. For, for example, observation or inspection of larger satellites, uh, in space assemblies, manufacturing or new techniques related to space missions. Okay, now we pass to see what we have gathered so far. So as we said in the last months, we have done a lot of research to prepare the, the path for uh, the few, the next months for uh, our CubeSat uh, uh, mission. So we have discussed with several companies, with several professors, and we have uh, gathered interesting subjects. So here you can see there is a list of, uh, of uh, the activities of the mission proposals related to all the major fields. Uh, the most interesting ones are related to, uh, okay, for technology and demonstration, okay, there is the possibility to develop a low cost uh, uh, electronic validation platform that can host uh, several technologies on one CubeSat and so can improve the efficiency for testing proposal for CubeSat, but also uh, multifunctional structure. So if we want to increase the, the size uh, or the volume of the payload and uh, mi minimize, of course, the, the impact of uh, the CubeSat, so the satellite itself, we can use multifunctional structures, so structure devoted to, for, to multi-purposes, so for power, thermal management and control, and of course, structure itself. Uh, related to science, we have interesting subjects related to the study of the atmosphere and study of the Earth environment from the radiation point of view. While uh, at the end, we have space activities. So as Professor Delizza said um, before, we have a lot, a lot, of, uh, of CubeSat, uh, sorry, a lot of uh, uh, um, space debris and objects that are orbiting around the Earth. So with increasing number of missions, we have to provide uh, uh, our satellite um, a safer environment, let's say, or the instrument to survive such kind of environment. So uh, among the 
thousands of CubeSats that have been launched up to date, so uh, more than 2,700. Uh, 2, Only uh, 3% of them has a propulsion unit. So the idea is to put a propulsion unit on our CubeSat to test new technologies, in particular related to green propulsion, green propellant. Why? Because uh, since we are a university, we want to the students to put their hands on the uh, this project. So we need, of course, uh, the safest possible propellants uh, while maintaining, uh, let's say, the performance as high as possible. So uh, instead of using toxic propellant, we will use uh, green propellants. Now let's see uh, how we are gonna get from here in Milan up to space. So the plan is within two years. So we start from now, okay, in T1, uh, trimester one, with a phase A slash B uh, taken from, from the ESA phases with the mission design. Then we will pass to the detailed platform design in which we will uh, detail all the low level requirements related to, to our system. Then we pass to the platform production. So we pass from she to the metal. So our platform can take, uh, take the form. We have all the subsystems that uh, came alive and we uh, perform our testing on it. And finally, of course, we have the integration. We have to be sure that all the components are working together and that, and that can survive uh, the, the launch and the space environment. Now we will see a little bit more of detail of what's coming next in the very next days. So of course, up to now, we have performed a literature review. We have seen that there are several proposals. We cannot fit everything into one CubeSat, okay, even if we include three units. So we have to perform a trade analysis. So the nine that Lyle presented before are the people devoted to this task. So they have to perform a trade-off and decide which are our mission goals. Of course, they won't work alone. So starting from April, more or less, uh, we will launch, uh, we, they will work with uh, uh, a new part, a new part of the team. So I'm proud to say that starting from the 24th of March, so in two weeks, we are going to open the positions for the team members that are related to the categories that you can see here. So for attitude control, telecommunication, thermal control, electrical power, and structure and robotics. Okay, please be sure, be motivated, be enthusiastic, keep your enthusiasm with you, uh, up to us. So prepare your CVs, prepare your motivation letter, which is very important. Stay tuned and uh, we will see you very soon. And I'll pass the word to Francesca that will explain you the future project for our association. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, guys. So now I'm going to talk about the future projects of Polyspace. So everything that we will develop in the next month. We have the IAC Dubai 2021, we have the Rascal Challenge, hackathons, visits, events, guest lectures, and you can even propose your own project. But let's see everything in details. So first, we have the IAC International Astronautical Congress. This year will be held in Dubai, and we have already sent two papers. One has been written by the AI AA team, and the name is Phase A Design of Ice Cream, a Cost Effective Mars Sample Return Mission. And the second was written by all the executive members of Polyspace, and the name is Polyspace, a student approach for enabling the growth of the Italian space workforce. Obviously, our main goal would be going to Dubai to present our paper. And if you join us, you could be one of the person involved in the project. Second, next, uh, we have the RESCAL competition. This is a challenge organized by NASA, and it's normally for American University only, but Polyspace was lucky enough to have been invited by the Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, so we can join the competition with them. Uh, the steps will be the following. In the next month, we will do some team building with the Embry-Riddle University. In July 2021, the RESCAL themes will be announced. 
Then in March 2022, we need to submit the proposal. And in June 2022, if selected, we can even go to the Rescal Forum in Cocoa Beach, Florida. Third, we have the great, great opportunity to co-organize hackathons, thanks to Professor Camilla Colombo. We are still defining the details, but we could need your help to organize these hackathons. So stay tuned for further info coming soon on our social media channels. And then we have we are planning to organize some visits to museums, but also to partner companies' headquarters. And if possible, we also want to do live events, such as we done last September for the Atuper2 event. And for sure, we are still organizing webinars and seminars with professionals of the space field coming from all over the world. Next, last but not least, you can even propose your own project. So if you have an idea about something or if do you want to start to assemble a team for an interesting competition? This is what you have to do. You need to register as a member at polyspace.it, our website, and then you have to click on the private area in the menu. You need to click the propose a project button and then fill the form and uh, we will let you soon, uh, we will give you more information soon. So that's it. I hope you will enjoy our, our future projects. And now I'll leave the word to Francesco for the conclusions. Hi, guys. Uh, nice to see you again. I hope you enjoyed the presentation we had so far. Just a few words before having a <clears throat> rapid Q&A with uh, Nicolo. So I wanted uh, to remind you something. First thing is, if you want to work with us, you will get the chance to work with us because we have an executive members call open and you can uh, join, jump in the association, of course. Just uh, go on our social media and find the link in our bio and you will be able to um, jump in Polyspace and help us. Uh, of course, first thing is that uh, please, if you want, reach us uh, through our website. Uh, if you want to become a member or uh, whatever else, if you might find any problem, just reach us. Uh, then, as I was saying, the call for executive members, it is open till 20th of March. So please, if you want to work with us in the leading team of Polyspace, join. Uh, third, last but not least, from 24th of March, we will be opening the call for CubeSat team members. So you will have the chance of working inside the teams for the uh, CubeSat. Uh, the, the event is not uh, ended because now we are going to have a Q&A question sorry, session. Uh, I would like to thank all of you anyway for staying with us till now. And I hope that uh, we can answer all of your questions. In any case, you are welcome to reach us at info at allspace.it. Okay, so well. please, let's go with questions. First of all, I would say we can answer a Simone Zambrin question. Uh, he just was pointing out, he was asking if you can become uh, be eligible for the open positions without being a member or external collaborator. Well, the answer is no. Uh, to be eligible and to actually get into Polyspace in one of the open position, you have to uh, be part of Polyspace, and because of that, you basically will be. Um, you need to be a member, so it's mandatory. Then, yeah. So there is a question from Two Stroke Riders. If someone managed to join Polyspace during the first three years of my degree, will I lose my membership if I decide to continue my studies in a different university? Well, yes, because uh, as I said before, we have a very strict 
legal policy. So we are not able to actually welcome people that are not uh, anymore in Politecnico. Then uh, we have Giacomo Tanaglia asking, are any study requirements needed? Uh, well, uh, actually, it depends on what are you aspiring to do inside PlaySpace, because, of course, if you want to become uh, a team leader, as we have seen before, uh, for a particular aspect of the CubeSat uh, development, uh, you, of course, will need some kind of uh, competence in what you are working on. Uh, if you want to just be a member, for example, and just to participate to our webinars uh, and be part of the association and learn, uh, then no, there are no any study requirements needed. You just uh, have to join. Another question from Andrea Pozzi. How many hours per week on average will take to actively participate to Polyspace? Well, uh, actually, Nicolò, do you want to answer? I bet yeah. it's eight, seven, eight hours. Yeah, actually, uh, here again, it, it depends. Uh, we had uh, weeks, uh, uh, especially before uh, a deadline, in which we had really, really a big amount of work that we had to handle. And in those days, you, yes, maybe you work even more than eight hours a day, you know, joking, but eight hours a day is a possibility before a deadline. But otherwise, uh, we all have a university life. So it, once again, it depends on your position. Of course, if you are in a leadership position, for example, inside a project, uh, you will have to coordinate all the other guys working with you. Uh, and so you have to spend more time. If you are uh, just, uh, working on the project as a member, uh, you will surely have to work less. And again, uh, before a deadline, you always had to like spend a few more hours working on the project. So it depends, but uh, in, a, in a week, basically uh, 20 hours uh, is a good reference. In 20 hours, it's, it sounds quite much. Actually, it's- During it's a project. Uh, yeah, doing a project, it's like this. Uh, just uh, one note, we agree with Professor Delizia uh, for the balance in the studying and participating to such activities. So we won't be charging you uh, anyway. Let me answer to uh, a personal question, actually, because I see my name. Alberto asks, Francesco, can you explain more in detail uh, for everyone how students can come to Polyspace presenting project? Uh, well, you just uh, write down everything on a sheet of paper and then you come to me and you deliver. <laughs> uh, just joking. Actually, the, the procedure is this one. You, you go on our website, you become a member of Polyspace, and then you can, uh, you can have access to a special section of our site, uh, website, which is um, devoted for uh, delivering the, this project, for submitting this project. After uh, you go there, you will find um, a Google form you should compile with some specific field uh, in order to give a characterization to your project, to categorize it. After this, your project will be submitted to the board of Polyspace, so we can evaluate the feasibility and the need, and if this project like marries our interests, and we can decide to say uh, go or not go basically so this is more or less the the procedure for delivering projects well, regarding future project proposals who is in charge of recruitment for the teams of the proposed mission uh, well uh, in this kind of situation we will open as you've seen for the cubesat competition an, an open form well basically everyone can try to uh, to take part and Polyspace, especially the human resources uh, department, will work on on the elaboration of these kind of forms and decide uh, who is the best candidate for the job. More specifically, uh, for the if you are talking about because I guess you are the Cubesa team, uh, the recruitment will be done in collaboration with the team leaders uh, by the HR department. Yeah, in any case, be prepared, uh, prepare your CV and your motivation letter and be ready to jump in. 
we, we are ready to welcome you. Um, oh, Giuseppe, I see uh, this question from you. There would be other technical members for the CubeSat apart from the leaders. Uh, well, actually, uh, just uh, explain that basically, yes. So we are going to have a call for CubeSat team, uh, sorry, CubeSat members, team members that um, will be opening uh, on 24th of March. And this call is for team members of the following subsystem. So telecommunication, thermal control, structure, um, then um, electrical uh, power system and attitude control. So uh, if you want to join one of these categories, uh, please apply for this call. Thank you. Then we have, do we have to be a member before applying for CubeSat recruitment? Well, the answer is no. Uh, you don't have to be a member, uh, but you just have to submit again your, uh, your, your application and we will evaluate that and make you know if you are in or not. But uh, even if you don't, you can just become a member and be part of Polyspace and help us grow. Thank you for addressing this question, Nicolo. Now we have Gabriele uh, that asks, can a computer science engineer apply for CubeSat member position in which category? Well, this is a very nice question, finally. So, guys, it is straightforward. You don't need to be an aerospace engineer or a space engineer to join the, the space field. So, instead, on the contrary, we really need people coming from other sectors because now space is expanding on other domains, which are informatics, telecommunication, uh, astrobiology, space law. Like we really need all of all of these uh, backgrounds and expertise. Say it so. Uh, you are a computer engineer. Well, I would say you can. You have some software expertise, so maybe you can join uh, the TMTC team or you can join the EPS team. In any case, what you study, it doesn't matter. Because the point is, uh, which are our skills and your knowledge related to space and how, are, how much are you motivated to carry on a space project? Because our philosophy is to um, allow students to learn by doing. So if you really want and you have the right uh, the numbers for getting hired, you will be. That for how many people will be the call for team member? Uh, well, um, the number of people that we will um, make work on the project is yet to be defined. But uh, I really um, ask you not to worry about the number of position open. Just try your best and write a good motivational letter and try to work on your CV and put your skills out because that's what counts. We, we, don't, we don't have an idea right now of how many positions will be open and it is flexible. It may even change. So we can give you a right answer. Just try your best and try to get in. We have another question from Gabriele. To be a member, it is only needed to pay the fee and be a Polini student. Well, actually, yes. So uh, the only requirement is that you are uh, regularly enrolled in Polimi. Uh, again, I remark from many departments, so it's not needed to be from the Department of Aerospace Engineering. Uh, and you can, of course, apply. Must the CV and the motivational letter be written in English? Well, of course. Uh, we insist uh, on, on the use of English because it's the international language and because we want to be an international community. So we ask you, yes, to write CV and motivational letter in English. Wow, an interesting question. Why should we choose Polyspace instead of Skyward? Well, I would say that it's not an out-out. Do you know this expression? It's Latin. It means or, or. So uh, you are not forced to choose between uh, Polyspace and Skyward. Actually, Polyme is plenty of association. If you are referring to the fact that we bought 
are caring about the aerospace domain. I would say that uh, Polyspace is born because um, we are different from Skyward. We just take care of the space uh, side of the, uh, let's say, of the thing. No, we are not launching rockets. Uh, we are traveling on rockets for rich in space. So this is the crucial difference uh, that, uh, yeah, it's between us and Skyward. So if you want, if you want to design rockets, uh, join Skyward. If you want to design rovers, if you want to design satellites, if you want to learn more about space missions, join Polyspace. Well, it is time to end. Welcome, Chipset. If I am in the first year of my bachelor's degree. Uh, well, uh, since we have closed the application for team leaders, uh, for that position, yes, and even because it wasn't open for first year bachelor degree. But uh, when we will open the positions for the rest of the team, we will, of course, try to take, be part of the team. And yeah, there's no need why you shouldn't be able to participate. There is Maurizio. Maurizio. He has a known name. He also applied for some position, I guess. So to work on CubeSat as a member, do you have to have member to be member of Polyspace because leading position were close to Polyspace member is that Maurizio? What do you mean? Uh, actually, the previous call for leaders of the CubeSat team position well was open to anyone. So and so there will be the call that will come afterwards. So all calls for working with us are open, even if you are not yet a member of Polyspace, then you will have to, your time, take your time to become a member. It's not a problem to us. Can I apply for more than one team position to get more possibility to be chosen? Well, of course, there's not a limit on the number of positions in which you can try to get in. But of course, keep in mind that in the end, uh, even if you get chose, chosen for even more than once, which is probably not going to happen, uh, you will have to uh, decide whether you actually can manage the amount of time that will be needed. Hypothetically, you can even be the whole team if you, if you were able to manage everything. But uh, since this is not uh, a, a real possibility, is not going to happen. So yes, you can apply for more than one team and position. Okay, we have another question from Leonardo. So what are the recruitment choice parameters? Uh, well, actually, we have four, uh, four parameters when evaluating the profiles. Uh, we have CV. So regarding the form of the CV, the layout, the organization. We have the uh, motivation of the candidate, which is uh, retrieved from his motivation letter and, uh, of course, from his CV. Uh, then we have uh, the uh, skills that, of course, reflect the competencies of the candidate. And we have some previous experience, which are usually extra points that we assign to people that are particularly uh, deserve particularly to to have this kind of extra points. Uh, so these are basically the recruitment choice parameter. Of course, if you are uh, like talking about more technical aspects, you should expect also few technical questions to assess your knowledge. But that's that's straightforward. Uh, usually, uh, very very often, we have made our calls such that we had two rounds. First round was just evaluation of the um, delivery, so like uh, CV and motivation letter. Second round was a round of interviews. Oh, I see another. Uh, I see another question. I guess from Gabriela. Is there any difference between Skyward and Polyspace regarding the relationship with Polytechnico, engagement with professor, foundings, etc. Uh, well, Gabriele, um, as of now, Polyspace is not uh, an official association of Politecnico. Uh, we are um, we have an ongoing process of ac acceptance from Politecnico, so of course we don't have the same uh, relationship. Uh, what I could say is that, as you can see, 
we have the uh, we have gained the interest uh, of uh, professors of uh, at least from our department but also from external departments which are maybe developing some interesting con concepts to be tested on uh, our CubeSat or on whatever equipment we are planning to launch. So let's say we are not officially uh, an association of Polytechnico, but we are running Polytechnico uh, in, in the space sector in this moment. Paolo is asking, as student applying to the CubeSat project, should we apply to the team that we are most interested in or to the team that fits our studies best? Nicolò? Well, uh, here again uh, is your choice uh, because, uh, of course, if you apply for the team that fits your studies, you will have an advantage for your future and also an advantage in terms of knowledge. But also, uh, you surely have to enjoy what you do. You have to enjoy your work and be passionate about it. So I personally will recommend you to apply for the position in which you are more interested in and not the one that fits best your study. We have another question from Luca. Your questions are very interesting, actually. You remind me of many things that I always want to say to the applicants. Is the CV auto-generated from Servizio line enough, or do we need to write a new one? Well, guys, I will like unveil a secret now. If you, the, the more time you spend uh, working on your CV and try to sell yourself to, to the um, HR, the more chances you have to get hired because you will, I mean, this is a training for you. That's why we decided to undergo that kind of process because we want you to uh, be aware of which are the um, process that you will uh, face once you will go out of Polytechnico. So one, this, is, this one is one of the process which is crucial for getting a job. Uh, well, is not that the CV auto-generated is, is not enough. Is that the CV should transmit to the uh, person that is looking at it, so to the examiner, it should express your personality. It should express who you are and how motivated you are. So if you manage, if you have time, because we don't want to, to waste your time, no? But if you have some time to spend on these kind of things, uh, take also in account that once you have a template for your CV, you can also update it time by time. You don't need to build it from scratch. So if you might have some time to build your CV properly and to search for some means uh, that could be useful for building it, please do it because it is better from our perspective. Question from Mike. What a name. Due to the pandemic, we will be required to be in Milan to, to be actively part of the team in the following months. Well, Mike, uh, let's say that now we are all in trouble. Like, it's not possible to forecast this, uh, this kind of, of thing. Let's say that it would be nice if we very soon will have a place in which we could gather. Uh, but of course, I will, I will be a liar if I say, yes, uh, there is the need of being here. It will depend everything on the situation of the coronavirus, uh, on the evolution of the, uh, of the national provisions from the different governments. So don't worry, if you won't be able to be there, we will of course understand and you can carry out work, your work by remote. Ricardo, another question from Ricardo. There will be relationship with the aerospace industries or companies for the CubeSat project. Nick? Well, we are, of course, working with aerospace industries, but right now we can actually talk about our partners, as Francesco has said before. But of course, we will work with aerospace industries on our project. And we also we work with them in other projects and in other projects. So yes, that's basically the base of Polyspace. Well, it seems that we don't have any more question. 
I correct me if I'm wrong, Nicolo. So no, I believe they are all done. So yeah, unless so there's anything else. That's perfect. Okay. So guys, uh, we reached the end of uh, this amazing uh, presentation, uh, launch presentation of Polyspace. This was the first time we uh, you get to know us uh, in a very direct way. I would like to remind you that you can find this uh, episode uh, on uh, YouTube. Uh, we recorded the whole event. So if you would like to know more, please, you are really, really encouraged to reach us on our um, website through our emails like info at polyspace.it. You can also write to me to whatever. Uh, so we are we will be really happy to answer your question. And uh, yeah, we are waiting for you to join us. Uh, we really hope that this reality is welcome in uh, Politecnico and is welcome from you students that will be the uh, fuel for the future of this association. So thank you guys, and I hope to see you soon, and uh, I hope you will join the association. Let me just thank all the guys that have set up this uh, event, uh, all the guys that have worked so hard to, uh, to bring Polyspace where we are. So thank you guys from the bottom of our heart. I'm talking about also on behalf of uh, Swarna Jodi and Aloysia. We are so proud that uh, a small idea like ours have reached this level of complexity. Thank you so much and see you soon. Um, you have to know that uh, things like this start just from one thing, which is a dream. My dream was that all students could be able to develop projects in our university. Here we want to establish something which is way bigger. I would say a company, more or less. But for doing this, we, we need all of you.